Hey everyone, how's it going? It is Monday. It is October 31st. It's the last day of October. You know what that means? It means I don't have to send out emails every day with the file anymore for those people that have subscribed to NBA and NHL for October. That's true. That is true. But another thing I've done is I've set up a Google Sheet for people that still want to see the projections because I understand you don't want to do this work. I do the work every day in all these files. I know how difficult it is to get it right. And but how can you not do it when you can create probably the most predictive algorithm um, sports projections that that exist? I, I keep saying it. I'm waiting to get sued so that I can pr prove it in court that they are better than anything anyone else does. Because every time I compare this to somebody else making projections online over a longer term, over like a week or more, this thing beats everybody, just beats everybody. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's because it does not have a bias. It, it is using the stats to regressively determine what these outcomes should be and so it picks up differences between what the public believes and what the numbers say and if you believe the numbers mean anything then this ends up being better and and that's what happens so um i'm going to briefly touch on nfl for a second uh this is the last i'm not going to say it's the last it is the last but it is the last nfl video before we have an excellent week that i'm going to make public meaning the rest of the videos, I don't know how many weeks it will be that I do not make them public or I, I release them public after all the games are over and everyone's received them. But I just, I don't want to put it out anymore because I my spidey sense is tingling and I do not like what I'm seeing out of certain NFL games and officiating and everything else. And it makes me feel like I'm wasting my time um, because if if the numbers don't mean what they mean and and these outcomes a lot of times are sometimes predetermined in these games because there's nefarious activity going on, then why are we projecting, you know, scores? It doesn't matter. So very, very briefly, it does say the Bengals beat the Browns and the line's not that bad. Um, spreads three, but NFL, I, I'm sour on NFL right now. So, but I am going to do a bunch of work on this file to try to get the projected uh, points to, to do something better to see if we can match it, but I'm not going to tell myself on it. So that's NFL for Monday night. I guess if you do one thing, focus on probably NBA is what you should do. And I'll explain NBA here. So today um, we have, it looks like seven games and there are four underdogs on here using current season stats as our guide. Atlanta's healthy against Toronto at a plus one. It almost looks fishy, that line. I mean, Toronto's not very good, but uh, Atlanta's okay. And then Charlotte, a little injured against Sacramento, also plus 130. These margins here, above 10% in the current version. Pacers, once again, can the Pacers strike lightning again and this time beat the Nets at plus 270? So there are a little bit of injuries here on both teams. Indiana plus eight. Looks like a pretty strong pick there, right? And then Utah, one of our favorite teams that's won four games and lost one for us this season, I believe. All, uh, sorry, and the only game they lost, they were a favorite, believe it or not. If you look back at their history, let me show you a cool way that you can do that. So we have all the games in here uh, if we want to look at them in the Excel file. And you will get a copy of the Excel file the day you, you purchase the subscription to the Google Sheet, which is here for the month of November. I will send you a copy of the Excel file so that you can start to update it yourself and not be relying on me. That's the whole point of this is you can take the Excel file, you can run the stats yourself and you don't have to worry about me at all. Um, but I wanna talk about some other things you can do in here real fast because a lot, a lot of times I like to make these videos a discussion about the capabilities, not just the picks because it's more interesting, I think to all of us to, to be able to learn the, the data analysis and, and the way everything's put together. So I was just saying that off memory, I remember Utah winning four games and losing one, and the only game they lost, they were in a favorite. Let's see if that's correct. Well, if we open up every single day except the 31st, and then we want to create a slicer, or we don't even have to create a slicer. We can just uh, filter the team of references, the Jazz. And you'll see that it looks like they've played – it looks like they've played seven games and my memory is faulty and they were an underdog in one, two, three, four, five of those seven games. And did they win or did they lose? What was the margin here? So we're just kind of viewing the history and 
I'm just I'm looking at everything at once here just to figure this out. So they lost to the Rockets. We could add dates and stuff in here. They did win this at an underdog line, this at an underdog line, this at an underdog line. They lost one to the Nuggets at an underdog line, apparently, if I got the scores in here correctly. They beat Houston as a favorite, and they beat the Nuggets as a underdog. So it looks like four out of five underdogs and one out of two when they were a favorite, if that makes sense. So they've been an excellent team for us profit-wise, and the algorithm has been um, pretty accurate with them. There's also some more complexity in here because there's current and last season stats that we've also used, so it makes it a little more difficult to look at history right now. But basically, that's kind of some of the stuff you can do is you can look at history of everything to see if, if the algorithm has been really good with a team. So that makes me um, a little more, I mean, there's a couple reasons why this is probably a pretty good pick for the Jazz today. The health number on the Grizzlies being low, and we could look at the injuries and the injury report for the Grizzlies to see what is happening with them. They've got some game time decisions, so those people are not out. But Morant illness, I mean, when it's illness, I, I assume they're out because – you don't just naturally not get sick. I mean, I wasn't feeling great today either. And it takes a while and I rested and I feel a little better, but I wouldn't go out and play a basketball game today. It's same thing with the Ravens. And what, what does that say? Two illnesses on the same team. What does it mean? It means it's probably spread around the team, doesn't it? Start to really infer some things by looking at that injury report. So I am now even more confident that the Jazz are probably going to win this game because you've got a sick Grizzlies. You've got a team that the algorithm – Estimates pretty well this season and 6% margins is kind of acceptable. So you can see why these are good. Now, what else do we have to look at? Look at this. Look at the Clippers injured at a minus 425 all the way down here. That is saying take the Rockets plus nine and a half. What are the injuries on the Clippers? Let's see. Are there illnesses on the Clippers? John Wall's resting? Why? Is that He's a game-time decision, so he might play. But there's Kawhi Leonard's knee is out. And uh, here we go, illness. Mm-hmm. That's right. We got, we got COVID 3.0 coming through. Everyone's a little sick as, as, the, uh, as the sun starts to go down and we get closer to winter. Plus, we've got, oh, man, what do we have? Uh, change of time. Did that happen last night? I don't even know. What year are we in? I, I don't, did, did change of time happen last night? There's no way to know because our phones just changed themselves. I need to go look at old retro clock to figure that out. Um, anyway, so this is the look at NBA here for the day. Um, but let's also glance at last season stats just for a second, just to see what happens. And probably this will probably show the reason why all these underdogs are showing up. So in this situation, like Charlotte, it still likes Utah, in both versions, right? I mean, wow, like Utah's, even though it's not super high on this margin list, and actually it is a toss up according to last year. I kind of understand this line here, but everything else kind of tracks a little better. The odds they track a little better with, with last year's stats. And I just see this as an advantage. I see it as an advantage for using current year stats because. I mean, we've got very limited sample size this year, but current has done better the last few days. Uh, at least in terms of order and in terms of underdogs. So when you see four underdogs like this, even if you hit two of them on straight bets, you are making money. And, and if you hit one of them, you're almost break even on the Pacers if they win. And if you can lose the other three, and if you hit the Pacers, you're almost even. So uh, anyway, that's NBA. I, I certainly, you know, it thinks the Bucks win this game here, but there's no good line to take advantage of. So it's really these four underdogs, and and maybe Houston plus nine and a half, given that you've got illness and, and a high percentage of injuries, but you also have injuries on Houston. So it's not all that great. I would just say take these 400 dogs straight. Um, you know, that straight back calculator I had up in the video a couple of days ago. That's what I would do. And uh, I might do that. We'll find out. I got all this stuff going on. I can't really pay attention to wagering today. But uh, let's now talk about hockey. So there's only three games in hockey today. And of course, Toronto blew it yesterday. Boy, do they blow games. Um, wow. They actually had two goals, like or one goal waved off on Anaheim late. And then I, it looked like the refs were trying to get Toronto to win a game and, and they still couldn't do it. Anaheim still wins in overtime. 
I mean, wow. It breaks a seven-game losing streak. Toronto is a team that you want to come to your town to break your losing streak because they will do that. So what do we have for today? Uh, well, we've got a number one pick of Buffalo over Detroit. Buffalo team that has been playing a lot better this season. And uh, we've got confirmed goalies already. So I was looking over the power projected scores as well. This is kind of interesting. So they're looking better after I changed some of the goalie formulas like this. This is supposed to be a range, basically. So it's saying that Buffalo puts up somewhere between four and seven goals about, right? But does think they get there. Here, Washington puts somewhere between three and three goals, right? So if you see that bet that says bet, you know, the estimate of Washington's team goals, you would go with three because the algorithm does not have them sway much from three goals. And it would say it's a 3-2 game all around. And it, it looks like a tie also. It's, it's a very close game here, but uh, it's saying probably under in most situations in this game. And it's saying the Caps can barely pull one off at a plus 170 line. That's nice to see. That means plus one and a half is probably not that bad. Uh, then there's LA and St. Louis. So here's your range between four and five goals for LA, between three and two goals for St. Louis. Interesting. Quick only has a 55% rating. I'm surprised that it's not favoring St. Louis in this game. Why is that? Ooh, they're not playing as well recently. That's right. They had a big bunch of back-to-back -back games. They were off several days, and then they have come back and started playing games over and over again, and they haven't been faring as well, I guess. So it does think LA can beat them in St. Louis, but extremely close game. And it's it's also not the top pick of the day. So it's Buffalo. It's it's Washington plus one and a half and probably Washington to win. And you've got over here, under, under here. And it's close. It doesn't know here because it's like four, two ish uh, type game. And the overrunners probably set at six. If it's at five and a half, you might be able to go over. Uh, we can look. The over under that game is six, 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 six. Yeah, they're all even. It's going to be tough. So that's the update for hockey, for NBA, for a quick, quick glance at NFL. And if you want to get access to the Google Sheet for the entire month of November, it's only 50 bucks. It's not that bad. And you'll just be able to open this up on your phone and you'll see this rendering and I'll have all the games stacked so that you can just, all right, you know, here was, here's NB, uh, NHL. If you want to see today's NHL, you're just going to be able to scroll, scroll down. And I'll probably even start adjusting this to make it even easier to view vertically on the phone uh, because we have everything broken out horizontally. You kind of have to turn your phone into landscape mode in order to really see everything uh, on the phone. And I might just remove the time, which is kind of not all that important. And, uh, and we could do that. So anyway, that's the update for Monday. Good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning. I'll be back with... I will not be doing videos every day on sports. I won't. Um, so you really need to subscribe to get copies of this stuff because there's a bunch of other projects that I'm in the middle of and starting um, here in the new month and then college basketball starts and payroll and accounting starts and stock market keeps rolling it every day. And I've got genetic analysis and molecular biology work to do on because we have to start extending human life. Um, so there's a whole lot of things to do and we're going to do them. All right. Good luck, everyone. Mail your picks be winning.